Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the Nikon D500. Let's get into it. It's 2024 and mirrorless cameras have pretty much got the market now and you can pick up these old DSLRs for pretty cheap um, but is that a good idea is it going to give you what you want now for me as a principally portrait sort of orientated photographer um, probably not uh, the advantages of using eye autofocus is just so good at the moment with mirrorless cameras and they've all got it. Um, to go back to DSLR is like, <laughs> it's really quite painful. Like, I couldn't imagine myself shooting a wedding or, you know, a model currently with a DSLR. And believe me, I've tried a couple of times. I've mixed it up. I've taken both cameras to photo shoots. Um, I've taken my D800 actually recently to a photo shoot with the lovely 85mm 1.4 AFS lens um, Nikon. And it was horrendous, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know what, when, when you do get a good shot, and everything's working well, the focus is good, etc. There's no problems. But the success rate is just incomparable to what you're going to get with mirrorless cameras. Um, but anyway, let's get back to the mirrorless situation. <laughs> Not the mirrorless, D500 situation. As this is about the D500. So, I'd always been curious about the D500. I've, um, you know, growing up in the era of film transitioning to digital, and of course, I've seen all the big um, brands put out their hero cameras, and of course, for Nikon with their DX line, um, this was definitely the hero camera. It was, and still is today. Uh, many people use it for sports and wildlife, etc. Um, but, like I'm saying, for me, it's not so relevant. Uh, the results you're going to get are going to be beautiful. There's no doubt about it. It's got a wonderful sensor in it. The processing power, um, the speed, the agility of the camera. Uh, the way it focuses is good, it's good, but after using the mirrorless cameras, I, I don't know, I'm finding it harder and harder to go back. Like mirrorless just makes it all so easy. Um, like you, you can really concentrate on your composition with mirrorless cameras which is wonderful um, and that's really what I want um, but I guess people out there they're more involved like even today I'm just shooting around in this park area here and I'm tending to sort of grab focus to focus on what I want to focus on um, I could be moving focus points etc but it's all just a little bit cumbersome and tedious. Uh, I have tried taking photos of my daughter uh, with the... I've got a couple of really good lenses for this camera which I am actually going to adapt for my Sony high megapixel cameras and 
I'm looking forward to that. So I have given it a good run taking photos of people. I've gotten some really good lenses. I've got the Sigma 50 to 100. Absolutely amazingly sharp and stellar lens. Um, I've used that on the D500 and I've also went and bought the 35 millimeter DX lens from Nikon which everybody raved about at the time and which I still don't really understand what they're raving about uh, but I got that just to try it out and see what all the hype was about and you know what you can get fantastic results but after using just about every single camera out there um, I can tell you that you can get good results with most cameras these days, alright? It would be a very strange situation where you cannot get good photos anymore. Um, comes a lot down to the lens you choose and your technique of course, but as far as mirrorless cameras go they've definitely got the edge with focus, um, even a basic contrast base system which is actually really good for stills photos will absolutely destroy the old DSLRs well that's my opinion anyway like I just can't get it as sharp as what I'm expecting now and it's a big disappointment but anyway that's just me I'm gonna get rid of the D500 I'm not happy with it um, not for what I do somebody else may find it great um, somebody else who is shooting wildlife um, or sports and things like that, maybe it works well for them. But for me, where critical focus on the eye is paramount, it's just not working out for me. I just can't get it to do what I want it to do. Uh, which is really disappointing because I thought, you know, it's from the DSLRs, this has the ultimate spread of focus points, like there's no doubt about it. It's also got a massive sensor to choose the autofocus points it selects, but even with all these advantages that it has over every other DSLR, it's still just not as good as a mirrorless camera, for me. Um, maybe for somebody else, they, um, they, they can do it. Um, and it's not that it can't do it, it's not that I can't do it, it's just that the hit rate is down so much. I'm now used to getting most shots in sharp focus. Um, it'll be the odd shot that's out of focus, you know, not on the eye when I'm taking portraits, etc. And I just can't handle having, you know, like 50% of my shots not tack sharp. <laughs> um, it's pretty anal, I know, but what do I do? You know, it's what I've become accustomed to and it's probably what most people have come accustomed to. Um, so I would say moving forward now, it's going to be mirrorless only. Um, I will use a DSLR for landscape shots. Um, I think they've got a good purpose there where you're focusing at infinity and critical focus isn't um, so paramount. Uh, but definitely for close-up subjects, um, anything where you have to focus uh, critically, a DSLR is just not going to do it. But it is a beautiful camera, it's um, very familiar to me after using D800. Um, fantastic construction, look at this camera. I mean this camera has nearly 50,000 clicks on it and you know, I bought it in a pawn shop, which is what we call a shop that sells second-hand goods or lends money on second-hand goods. I bought it for a good price. Um, they'd had it sitting there for a while and I got a good price on it and, you know, it was a bit of a gamble. I didn't know the shutter count. Got it home, checked that straight away. I didn't know if it was going to have 250,000 clicks on it or 10,000 clicks on it, but it ended up having about 50,000 clicks on it. And that's fine by me. Um, it was really dusty, I cleaned it all up. Um, the insides were not dusty though, so that's good. 
um, just the exterior was dusty I cleaned it up and now it looks spanking good it's a good camera it's solid buttons everything works fine very very nice to use very sure in operation very reassuring when that shutter button is pressed and you get that clunk of the mirror it's nice and nice reflex action you know and um, that's why it's a reflex camera it's a nice clunk clunk with the, the mirror and the shutter going it's all good it's really good um, if you are nostalgic and you like using DSLRs, I would highly recommend this one. Um, but for people who are not looking for that nostalgic or, you know, viewing through the pentaprism sort of experience, for people who don't mind looking at a little tiny screen magnified um, in, the <laughs> in the viewfinder, I would say stick with mirrorless um, it's gonna be better on every level but anyway that's my wrap-up of the D500 it was a disappointing sort of gamble on my side but um, I can see it working for somebody else and perhaps that's you But anyway I'll chat to you later oh and by the way yeah like I said the sensor in it the dynamic range the colors Everything is what you'd expect from a professional grade Nikon camera. It's superb and Like I said if you want a DSLR You like that sort of function. This is definitely a camera to consider 100% I would recommend this um, It's got illuminated buttons All the dials are familiar in familiar sort of Nikon territory as you'd expect so, yeah, that's my summary of the D500. I hope it helps you if you're trying to make a decision in 2024 which one to buy. Um, for me, no, but for you, maybe. Okay, catch you later. Bye.